Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. I'm back in the kitchen again today and this morning I'm making some wine so I thought I would show you uh, the process that I use to start off uh, a gallon of wine and, and today I'm making some plum wine. Now, this is not a full wine making video uh, but it will show you how I start it off. One of the most important things is that uh, everything you use uh, in relation to your wine is very very clean so it's worth sterilizing equipment uh, before you begin. Here I have um, three and a half pounds of plums uh, that were previously frozen so these are last year's plums uh, and two days ago I popped them into this bowl poured boiling water over them uh, covered them uh, and I've left them to stand for the flavor and the color as you can see to come out of them um, and I also put in uh, a very small handful of sultanas uh, so they've just been sitting and it smells wonderful so I'm going to strain them off I'm not going to throw that away because uh, I'm going to use that for something else. Uh, so this is the liquid that I'm going to make my wine with. Here's my demijohn. Uh, I've just sterilised this uh, using uh, a sterilising solution. Uh, I actually use uh, baby, baby equipment sterilising tablets. As long as you follow the instructions uh, on whatever you get, uh, that should be absolutely fine. Uh, but I can't, I'm not going to guide you because the instructions will be different uh, for different products. Uh, so into here I'm now going to add um, sugar, uh, the water from the plums uh, and my yeast mixture. So using a funnel um, I've weighed out my sugar. Now uh, that was three and a half pounds of plums uh, that I put into the bowl to soak. Uh, I'm going to use three pounds of sugar. And I'm putting the sugar in first uh, so the funnel isn't wet when I'm trying to put the sugar in because otherwise all that happens is the sugar just sticks to the funnel. Uh, it took me about three or four goes to learn that one, uh, so that's a good tip. Next thing I'm going to do uh, is add in the, the fruit juices. Now, it really doesn't matter what fruit it is, as long as you've extracted the, the juices and the flavour from it. What I used to do uh, would be to press the fruits, but something like plums, uh, an awful lot of bits come out, which means you don't get a particularly clear wine, uh, and it takes an awfully long time to settle. Uh, so uh, I've stopped squeezing things like plums and pressing them to get the last bit of juice out. I just let them stand. And next, I'm going to put my fruit juice in. And the next thing I want to do uh, is make up the yeast mixtures to go in there. And I use a dry active yeast uh, for wine making. And obviously you follow the instructions, uh, but with this one, for one gallon, it's one teaspoon. It doesn't look like very much in here, and there's a, certainly a temptation to add in extra. But yeast is a living thing, 
uh, and it grows and swells and multiplies uh, and this really is plenty enough. So I'm going to add that to my mixture as well. And then I'm going to top this up uh, with lukewarm water. And before this gets completely filled up, I'm going to sterilise the handle uh, of a long spoon uh, just to give it a stir in the mix in. And the reason I'm doing this um, is that I think it helps the yeast uh, if there is some sugar dissolved in the fruit uh, and water. So the sugar won't all dissolve in it uh, at this stage, uh, but some has. So I'm going to carry on topping it up to the base of the neck. And in fact, for a couple of days, uh, I'm going to leave it at this level because the yeast action is quite vigorous and very often bubbles right up through the airlock. Uh, and this way, it just gives a little bit of space for the yeast to <laughs> do its thing. Uh, and then in two days time, I will top the water up till it's at the base of the neck, just here. So the last thing to do uh, is to put an airlock on it to stop this um, oxidating or oxidizing. I'm not sure which it is. And for that, uh, I use an airlock. Uh, there are different designs. This is the one I like to use. Uh, so you fill up uh, the top part about halfway with water. You could also use an alcohol uh, like vodka to do this. And then you push it into the top so this has got a nice seal uh, between the the rubber bung uh, and the glass jar uh, it's got a seal here so no air can get in and as the yeast action happens uh, the carbon dioxide will come up through this tube uh, around through the airlock uh, and out of the top next thing to do is just to leave this now to do its thing uh, you can see that it's already <laughs> It's already getting busy. I tend to stand this in a container uh, just in case it does fizz all out of the top so it doesn't make a mess everywhere. Uh, and in a few days time, as I said, uh, I'll top this up to uh, the base of the neck here uh, and then I'll just put it in a uh, not a very hot place, not a very cold place, uh, just a room temperature uh, to ferment for the next three to four weeks. And I'm sure at this point there are lots of you shouting at the screen <laughs> saying, no, no, that's not how you do it. Uh, this is how I do it. I'm not making uh, a high quality fancy wine to sell. Uh, I'm making a country wine uh, for Mr. J to drink. It will be an everyday wine. It will be palatable. Uh, some of them are a bit sweeter than others, but uh, as this is a plum one, I don't imagine it will be too sweet. Generally, I tend to think these country wines are a bit sweeter than, say, a, a really nice Graves, um, which is very dry. <laughs> but they do the job, and they're a really good use of the surplus fruit here. I'm going to use a sticky label uh, just to, to label it and so I know which wine is which, because at this time of year I make quite a lot of wine. Uh, they all just look like um, pinky red <laughs> liquids. No idea which is which, unless I give it a label. Well, I hope you found that useful uh, when I do the next stage in the winemaking. Uh, I'll be sure to show that to you as well. Well, I think that's it for me. Oh, I've got a lot of tidying up to do in the kitchen today. And so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow. <laughs>